Welcome back to Any Relation to the Crisps. I'm Owen Seabrook and this is the podcast where I run through what I did in my year out as a university student at the ages of 20 and 21, where my year out I ran a business um, full time for about 15 months and all the experiences that I underwent there. If you are wanting to set up a business, if you don't think you can set up a business, if you are dissatisfied with the standard everyday grind and want to do something fun with your life and want to know what it's like down in the front lines and really understand what running a business is like and being put through all those personal tests and trials and tribulations, then this is the podcast for you. I am currently squinting because it's a very lovely clear chilly october afternoon uh the sun is right in my eyes but i will persevere nonetheless because this podcast is important to me and i will see it through to its completion so we're on episode three battleship seabrook last episode we talked about my leads to new york internship program leadership program where i went to new york and spoke to a lot of business leaders did a pitch um, found a new element of my independence uh, this week slightly different story this is everything surrounding how I created a computer so to set the scene second year first year of a film degree I relied exclusively on my university's software and equipment so they have all these computer suites the most recent versions of Adobe and if I needed to do secret media work I would go into uni to do it all my files would be on those computers Um, basically I was beholden to uni which is quite um, what's the word it's a bit of an anchor really it's not it's not great when you when you're trying to run a business because you're having to work around booking off 24 7 fob out of university and things also just in terms of my personal sort of schedule and and my you know my routine i'm very much a, like a bulk worker uh, I, i'm yet to crack the, the 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 schedule work like you know arise at nine work till five repeat I much more often sort of get myself ready for the day as and when and then I I can easily sit and bust out 10 12 hours in one go and the problem with having a 24 7 fob and basically being totally alone in uni because no one's there past like seven uh, is that there is really no reason for me to leave until I feel satisfied that what I've done is enough so I would go in and work on these projects and I'd be there you know so some days are left at nine in the morning and that isn't what you need you, you need you need better infrastructure if you if you're in a business um both in terms of work hours and working at a, you know a reasonable place that you can access easily so I was in a position in around June, July 2017 to look into how I could get my own computer and my own software and there were a few things I was weighing up. One big thing in my mind at the time was the the whole Mac thing. If you're a creative, Macs are pretty, you know, pretty powerful course, they're pretty pretty common. Um, A lot of creatives rely on Macs so part of me was thinking, you know, I need to get a Mac. Another part of me was thinking I need to look into workstations because I've always used Windows, so maybe I'd rely on Windows. And there was this wildcard third option that I had no hope or stock in uh, of building a computer. In my second year, I was uh, head of marketing on the university's Enterprise Society. And in uh, it, sort of after one of our meetings uh, in, the, in the latter half of the year, I told the the president who I was mates with I said to him like I'm thinking about getting a computer I want something that I can get to whenever I want doesn't involve me having to come to uni um just weighing up options and he, him him always the opportunist says why don't you build one and I laughed at him I remember it very very well I I, I scoffed at the idea 
um, quite openly. Uh, I said that I would not know the first thing about building a computer. And basically just scratched it off. Um, I've never had a, a good relationship with things like systems. I assumed from a, 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 a total stranger's point of view that I would have to be thinking about a load of circuitry and, and complicated stuff like that. Um, in high school, didn't enjoy anything to do with wiring and circuitry and things like that. In A-level physics, my one bane of my life was anything to do with uh, <laughs> resistance, voltage, current charge, all that stuff. Uh, and basically, I just created this, this link, this association between... Um, machinery and and building machines with with that sort of thing so i assumed being a total beginner and a total stranger to all of this that it would be related and i just crossed it off uh, and he said consider it and he he planted a seed and it was one of those things where i i, I was negative about the idea but I sort of I, I felt like I knew that I would be re- be revisiting it and would do a bit of digging. So we're in July or maybe very late June actually, and I'm in uni and I'm working away and with two monitors, especially when you're rendering and things like that, and you're waiting around for the software to 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 do its work, you can do a bit of googling on the other monitor. So what I ended up doing was just pulling up a tutorial on how to build a computer. So before I get into this, I want to make it clear that this is a very applicable situation that a lot of people should have. And this is the main learning that this whole adventure of building a computer gave me because what I'd like people who are listening to take away is that I perceived that I would be unable to do something. Uh, uh, You know... I would be not fit or not successful in doing a a thing that really was a process and a series of physical tasks and I thought I would not be able to do it. I had very little knowledge of it so I was relying on my biased perceptions and the end of this story is that I would succeed in it and that computer is, is still going strong and is an absolute workhorse and is doing incredible. So I pulled up um, a tutorial from Newegg, which if anyone who builds computers knows is is a pretty common name. Um, I believe they're a a part supplier uh, website, but they had a a series of videos that was like, I think it's like three hour long tutorials and they just sort of run through all the the bits and pieces and assembly and things like that. So I was just watching it while, you know, doing my work and... I'd heard of a couple of, you know, and like I have a, a, I had a very, you know, rudimentary understanding of things like RAM and, and you know, ha- having owned a couple of laptops, I know what an i5 versus an i7 processor is and things like that. But I didn't know a lot of specs. But what I discovered, and this is, this is very specific, but I want people to bear in mind, again, the importance of this story is that it was... I didn't think I could do something, and then I did it. But what I found out digging into building a computer is that really you just have to meet a few important requirements, basically. First of all, all the fittings of everything are standardised. Like, in terms of the case which holds everything, you've got, like, small, medium, and large, basically. Motherboards come in small, medium, and large. A certain... SSDs are um, like little sort of chips that plug straight into the motherboards. Some are like involving wires. All you have to do for each part is just make sure that there is the correct port on the motherboard and then the motherboard fits into the case and that's literally it. Um, All cases come with this like rack of trays that you can screw things in like um, the, uh, I've forgotten all the terminology, but basically the panel that things like the USBs go into and, uh, you know, graphics card slots. And if you, you know, if you've got like a Wi-Fi card or something in that 
vertical co- like column of, of, of horizontal trays at the back of the computer is just a series of slots that you can either cover up or remove to, to put in new things at your will. What I'm trying to say is basically it's all, it, it's effectively Lego. Like it's made to be easy and it's a case of just plugging things into each other. Moving on from that, those parts need to be of a certain level of capability, but that's decided by you. So I knew that I had to um, support to a to an adequate level After Effects would basically be my, my, my benchmark and Premiere and rendering and things like that. So I wanted um, a computer that, that would be able to cope with that. So I based all of my selection of parts around that. And to go briefly into my specs, uh, off the top of my head, it's 32 gig of RAM, DDR4. Uh, it's got an i7 7700 processor. Um, what else? What else? What else? Two terabytes hard drive, 250 gig SSD for the the software. Uh, a 1060 graphics card, GeForce. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't think I'm missing anything out there, and it's got like a like a like a obviously like a, a fan and the PSU, which obviously had to just meet the basic requirements, um, which you can easily work out based off of what parts you're putting in it. So basically, that that was it: thirty two gig of RAM, i seven 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 hundred, um, two terabyte hard drive, two hundred fifty gig SSD, uh, ten sixty graphics card, and it came all together uh, to about. 1400 I think and this is including like Windows um, 10 and the monitor and things like that so that actually worked out to be less than about £500 less than the workstations that you buy see computer suppliers do this do this annoying thing where basically if you uh, they'll spec a computer up so that it's got everything except for one thing. So let's say you want a computer for graphic design, it'll have everything except a good enough graphics card, which will be available on the next model up, which will have even better stuff across the board, except for something that someone who needs that one might need. So it, it means that you have to buy the next expensive model, which is very frustrating, and, and Mac do this. Apple does this. Um, you know, you'll, you'll look at a MacBook and you'll be like, oh, it's good, but really I could do with a bit more RAM. So you buy the one that's like six hundred pound more expensive. It's, it's it's ridiculous. So I ended up saving about five hundred quid on what I could have bought, which is really good. And it was fourteen hundred pound, obviously disassembled. So I needed to buy all the parts separately and then put them together. But that's where the new egg tutorials came in. And I I mean when I say this, it, it literally required watching those three videos from new egg, and. <laughs> this isn't. I, I hope no one's like. Oh, is this a paid new egg sponsor? Um, but it, it it was they were the, they were the people whose videos I watched. And then uh, you know, if I had any specific problems, I could just Google, like you know how to, um, install a a processor properly because there's very specific things you have to do. Also, uh, I'm just gonna go out on a health and safety thing and say, uh, ESD bracelet. Make sure you get that. I didn't feel like I was at risk, but I was wearing the bracelet, so that's the intended result. Basically, if you're putting a computer together, you're going to build up static based off of, you know, if you're stood on a carpet, if the computer's on a on a mat that will, or, a, you know, a surface that will build up static, and when you're faffing with metal parts, you risk, uh, especially when the power's on, you risk shocking yourself and also frazzling your components, so you have to wear this bracelet that's basically just... Um, a band that goes around your, your arm and then there's a little like crocodile clip um that just clips onto any metal thing to just ground you so get that but what happened was i ordered it and and i remember very specifically it was july 1st when i started watching all these videos on newick so this was when i realized oh actually it's it's not anything to do with you know, resistors and calculating, you know, power and stuff like that. It's, it's not anything to do with the horrors that A-level physics and GCSE physics left me with. Uh, it's actually just like 
Lego. It really, really is. And I mean, when I say it is like Lego, it comes, all the parts of the, all you have to do is just watch a video that tells you how to do it as you're doing it. And you cannot get it wrong. Uh, in fact, I think it was the new egg video that I relied on when I was actually assembling the thing. But it was July the 1st, and I watched these videos, and I had this revelation. And it was one of those moments where you've t realized that you're going to do something before you've admitted to yourself that you've done it. So I was watching them realize it was dead simple, and I was like, oh, man, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to build a computer. But I didn't want to admit it to myself. So... I started ordering after I spent a couple of days comparing parts and just making sure everything is um, compatible. And there are websites to do this, and the name escapes me. It might it might be Newegg again, but I feel like it's something like PC Parts something something dot com. Um, but there are websites basically that check compatibility between the things because certain things might not um, have the same, you know. My, basically the components might not talk to each other the right way um, so all you have to do is just check the check the the compatibility and then I was buying and everything came over the next week and a bit and it was 12 days later so July the 12th that all the parts were assembled were, were there in my room all boxed up and I just loaded up this video and I just over the course of the day like I started you know, early in the day, and it took me like 13 hours, but by the end of the day, I had a finished computer, monitor, windows installed, everything, and it was it was a lot of fun, like it was just a day spent looking at like screwing things in and making sure everything's, you know, plugged in properly and a bit of problem solving and why isn't, why isn't this working, oh, it must be a wire, oh, it is a wire, I'm so clever, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, gratification I'd say in building the computer and switching it on and seeing it all wear up and the screen turn on was amazing uh, and you, you learn some stuff as well and, like you learn about like the boot menu and things and the you know the BIOS menu and things like just just stuff that it's good to be aware of and it's good to just have that experience of building the computer and so finished it that day had a computer from from then on sorted out my Adobe subscription um, you know, was able to 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 go into the the organizer's dream of like building file structures and things, and it has been a fantastic computer the whole time. It it turns on silently. It hasn't. It literally it, it boots up in about seventeen seconds. It's so fast. Um, it's it's really great. And for the majority of my year in enterprise, I I just had it in my room on my desk, so. A negative of this was that I could work at any time, and I did, and I would work, you know, into the night, or if I was having a slow day and it wasn't, you know, it, I wasn't getting into things very easily, um, I would, you know, deliberate until, you know, maybe the evening, and then I'd start working and finish at like five in the morning, maybe. But these are things that are, you know, you, you sort of develop over time and eventually I made the executive decision to move the computer into my office so that I had somewhere else to work that wasn't near my bed. Because this is another thing as well, if you're tired or if you haven't got enough sleep and you need to work, it's very easy to just stand up and walk three feet behind yourself and lie down. Um, so I've moved into my office which was provided by the university. So we have like a shared office space for all the student businesses. So it was good that I had a room to go and put a computer that wasn't in my house. So now I work from the computer in my office um, and it's fantastic. And also the benefit of that is I now have a reason to be in an office, which means I can be around other people who are working on things. You have conversations, you, you, you know, you're sort of indirectly networking as things go along and opportunities do come about just by meeting people. Um, I've met a guest to another podcast of mine, um, Entrepreneur Realism, through that office. In fact, there's a couple. Um, so there's 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 really a lot of stuff that can be said for for going through this experience. And what I think is a good practice just to do in general, um, in terms of being reflective and being appreciative of opportunities and things like that, 
consider the things you have going for you now. You know, the opportunities you have, whether you're, you know, even things as simple as, well, I'm at, you know, I'm at uni or I'm in school or something. I've got a job. And think back to the earliest reason for this, that, that whole thing even coming to fruition in the first place. So I've, I've mentioned this probably in episode one. Um, Secret Media started because I got locked in uh, in in college overnight. Not overnight, like after everyone had left. And this was, you know, three years ago, four years ago, actually. Um, I built this computer because literally just because my mate said, why don't you build one? And it was that that got the ball rolling, in honesty. So I'm very appreciative to my mate for doing that. And like I say, it's been totally reliable. So imagine being in a position where you don't think you can do something and, and it would probably be be good to try and apply this just here and now while you're listening to this. So think of a a thing right now that you are pessimistic about and think that, is not possible for you to achieve and consider that depending on what it is it could be the same time frame it might be longer it might be shorter but imagine that in 12 days you not only could feel not pessimistic about it but you are fully informed you know what you're doing you're confident it feels like something that's within your control and you can achieve it easily and that was the sort of transition that I went through over those two weeks at the start of July 2017, where I went from, I don't think I can do this, to actually it's incredibly easy. And one thing is for absolute certain, I know that every computer I'll be using from now on, every desktop, will be a custom build, because I'm not afraid of it. Le- more so than that, it's, it's very easy and it's very fun. And it's only because I didn't have the experience and hadn't sort of gone through the the, the journey of, of doing it for the first time that I could do it now. And if you know, if I hadn't have, have took it upon myself to build one, I would have bought one, I would have spent more money, maybe it wouldn't have been as good, I don't know. But I've learned a lot for having done it. There's a series of interviews which Chris Doe at The Future runs, which if anyone is interested in creative businesses, I would absolutely guarantee that you stop listening right now and go and and Google The Future. It's literally the words, The Future, except um, there's no E on The Future, so it's F-U-T-U-R. Basically, he does a lot of stuff that's focused on making, teaching young creatives and early creatives how to grow their business. And he does a series of interviews with um, prominent industry figures who are, you know, whether they're on the sort of the business side or the the creative side or the design side. There is an interview with Beeple, which is the um, nom de plume of... Uh, a guy who is known for using Cinema 4D to create daily pieces of work, and he's done dailies for a number of years now. I forget how many. But he's doing it to increase his, his abilities and, and make sure that there's always something that he's working on. Um, And he hasn't missed a day for however many years. I'm sorry I'm, like, yawning. I don't know why I'm yawning. I think I'm just not used to talking for so long. <laughs> But this guy Beeple says he his computer... So I was listening to this and when I heard it, I got my pen out and made a note. He said he'd just built a computer that could run a pretty heavy rendering on Cinema 4D's, Cinema 4D. And I think it was either four or eight 1080s were in the same computer. Or, you know, hooked up to the same system. Um, whether they were in the case or not, I don't know. But he said there were it was either four or eight 1080 TIs, I think. Um, and 
hearing that, and this was probably within the last like five months, whenever that whenever that video went up, um, hearing that, I was like, you know, having gone through the experience of building a computer, my impression was not of oh god i wonder how you do that because i I wasn't i was i knew how to build a computer so it's changing you know later experiences for me when i heard that what i thought was one day i will build a computer that's got a load of graphics cards in it rather than bloody hell how'd you do that that's amazing that's something that is beyond my skill level and i think getting into you know territory that i don't really like being into i, I, I don't like being this this sort of the 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 guy that's like let's use tony robbins as an example tony robbins is a motivating figure and i do listen to his stuff and he does provide some perspectives but my preferred method of persuading people is to be objective and factual and less about belief and more about logic and reasoning and practice you know i proved to myself that I could build a computer by building a computer which showed me objectively that I can do things which I think I can't do people like Tony Robbins can rely sometimes more on stuff like belief and and hope and things like that you know positive thinking and there is a story that addresses this later in this series um and it's going to contradict what I say now because it actually worked for me but I, I, I don't like to rely on that as like an objective means of proving to people because I think the best way to, to teach someone that something can be done is to prove it objectively and take away any sort of emotional um, leaning. You know, if people don't feel like they can do it, they're not going to learn that they can do it. But if you literally make them do it or show them that it can be done very, very easily, that that's something that can't really be argued with. Then if there's still a roadblocks in the way, it's, it's not to do with the fact that it can't be done. It's people just don't want to start doing it or for whatever other reason. So my point is that this was an experience that, that taught me objectively that I can achieve things of which I don't believe I'm capable. And I think that's something that a lot of people might easily um not have faith in which i don't expect you to what i would love it if people do after listening to this is just humor me and if there is a thing that they would like to do but they don't feel like they can do pursue it nonetheless and this is something that is that is you know this is a learning that has been a foundational belief going forward so you know looking at charging £25,000 for a job me a while ago wouldn't have done that but one very prominent argument is well I built a computer and I don't think I could do that me starting a series of podcasts I might have thought how the hell do I do that how do I get started well I just think back to the time I built a computer and I just learned how to do it and I did it that sort of thing it's 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 not something that that, <laughs> that can be argued with and that's a powerful thing to experience um, and to, to to undergo and then realise of yourself, oh, actually, I have just built a computer. And it was me. There was there was me and YouTube, and that's how I did it. And that was a really, really valuable lesson for me. So looking at the takeaways that are on my, my document, um, the assignment that I submitted to university uh, with all these stories on, three takeaways which I've already covered, looks can be deceiving, so I initially scoffed at the thought of building the computer and it turns out I'll be doing it every time I upgrade. So it's, you know, don't don't perceive that things are impossible or, you know, unmanageable or can't be done because you're not enough or whatever reason you want to want to give it, you know, people just assume that things are out of their out of their league because they aren't, you know, I'm not a computer programmer, I'm not an engineer, how am I going to build a computer? It don't matter, just learn how to do it and do it. It's just a series of physical things. Unbound potential. We shouldn't be too trusting of ourselves when we predict something can't be done. So same stuff. Um, Don't listen to yourself when you say you can't do something because, you know, there's a million reasons why you can't do something. And I will bet as well, this this, this is a story that for me holds a lot of value, but there are probably stories. In fact, there are definitely stories 
in everyone listening that they did something they didn't think they could do because how do you not everything there is a first time for everything and some of those first time things you will have been nervous doing so you know search for one of those and use that as as an argument to convince yourself in the future to do things that will benefit you but you're afraid of of going into and effort pays off i made sure to do the research and build the pc i needed and that's what happened so this is to do with don't just dive into it make sure you you know you're doing your research and doing your 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 checks and making sure that things are being done the way that they should be um you know what what would have been disastrous for me is if I just jumped straight into buying a computer and then realized that uh, building a computer and then realized that I bought you know a case that was too small or something. Um, so just make sure you know don't go into anything blindly. Make sure you you know asking questions and try and find out the things that you don't know that you don't know. Um, the 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 unknown unknowns are very important when going into something new you know make sure i think there are a few people that i've messaged and asked about things in fact uh one thing that i did was my mate who i think he built his computer um but he, he definitely knows more about building computers than me told him i was building a computer he said send me your um send me your spec list and i'll send it to my mate who does build a lot of computers and he'll check it over and i did that and, it, and he said it all looked good so you know just just do all the groundwork um basically but that's a story that that proved to me that that things can be done that seem like you know impossible tasks um on this document under me under my points of growth i've got flexibility use of knowledge research skills so flexibility in terms of you know just did it didn't deliberate you know, it took me two weeks and I had a built computer and, you know, I didn't need to use uni stuff anymore. Use of knowledge, so actively learning, doing research, you know, research skills is the third one, doing research and then applying that knowledge and, you know, putting it to work, not, you know, be, being being active in your learning and, and actually using the things that you learn to make a, make a real change into your circumstances to enable more things to come in the future and one thing is is for certain um having a computer in my bedroom meant that i was so flexible and so able to do things for a client you know if i got an email from a client or a message from a client saying uh could you change this for us or da 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 i, I can literally jump on the computer and do it there and then and that was very good i will say not feasible for a growing business past a certain point I know a lot of businesses start in the garage, but eventually you do need to, you know, put a nine to five on it or, <laughs> you know, set, set a closing time, close of business. So that's the story. That is it. Um, hopefully that's been of some value to, to people listening. My next story is my big Korean PowerPoint adventure where I travel to the South Korean lands and do a lot of exciting things including um create a presentation and create a business plan and experience south korea and do lots of fun stuff there similar to the new york one so that this summer of 2017 was a wild one i went from the big apple to uh daejeon in south korea um for different reasons but there are definitely overlaps but yes find out find out what happened then in the keist global entrepreneurship camp 2017